Don't just have people around just for the sake of having them around. No. No, not in 2023. No. No. And I don't know why, because I was just cold a minute ago. So I'm gonna turn this off. First of all, welcome back. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Francine. So today I'm gonna be talking to you about how I leveled up my life and just give you some tips on how I did it. Christian girl edition. I got baptized when I was age 11. And one day I'll share my story of how I got here because I wasn't always this person, this woman that is trying to exemplify what a woman of God should look like. A lot of people know me from the past and this version of me is somewhat unrecognizable to them because they don't know this version of me because I've left the old version of me behind. They unfortunately have never gotten to meet the healed version of me, the best version of me so far. And it's all because of God. And there are a few things that I did to get to where I am now and understand that this is a journey. It is an ongoing thing. Where I am now, it took a lot of work to get here. It took a lot of work to get here. And because I want women to also feel empowered and may look at me and, you know, feel inspired to do the same thing. First thing I did to level up my life was change my mindset. You want to change, you have to start conceptualize it and envision it and see what the version of you looks like. And just work towards that. So it's almost like you're working backwards. So I know the woman that I want to be and I know how she looks. I know how she speaks. I know how she dresses. Like, I know everything about her that I desire to be and I'm going to work towards that. So first I change, I shift my mindset. I change the way I thought about everything. I changed that limited mindset that I had and I created this abundant mindset, this mindset of change. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I am the head and I'm not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. The mentality that I need to be an example. I need to exemplify Christ and people need to see Christ in me. What does that look like? And what do I have to do to become that? And what things do I have to do to make sure that I can actually accomplish that goal. So that's the first thing, changing my mindset, shifting my way of thinking. Secondly, I developed a prayer life, one that was intentional, not just praying in the morning because I feel like, oh, that's what you do when you wake up, give God thanks for waking up this morning, opening my eyes and all my faculties are intact. And it was more than that. It was spending time with the Lord and, and being intentional about my prayer and the words that I used and the things that I was praying about and asking God in the midst of prayer to work on my heart and work on those things that should no longer be. Asking God to help me to exude the fruits of the, the Spirit, be more loving, be more kind, be more patient, God. That one's tough. Things that I'm asking for are not vain requests. They're really God. I need you to build character in me. I'm asking God to refine me. I'm asking God to mold me into this woman that you desire me to be. Along with prayer was spending time in the word, studying the word and applying the word to my life and letting the word penetrate me and allowing the word to consume me. And the beautiful thing about when you read the word first thing in the morning, like whatever trials may come that day, God has already equipped you and give you that extra ammunition to tackle whatever obstacle the enemy has. The devil 
has a full-time job to reap havoc in your life. He comes to kill, to steal, to destroy. But we feel like we just need to be a part-time Christian or pray sometimes. Like we need to be praying all the time. We need to make sure that we are equipped for whatever the adversary has throwing at us, whatever traps he has set for us. The enemy is on he's full-time duty. So we also have to be on full-time duty. This is not a part-time thing. This is a, this is a lifestyle. Fasting. Fasting has, has to also be intentional. It has to be a part of your lifestyle. There's something about fasting and denying your flesh so that the spirit can actually be fed. And then it gives you strength so that you can grow as a Christian, so that you are able to be in a position where you are strong enough to take on some rather challenging things that are supernatural, where you need the Holy Spirit to help you fight the battles. Next is I started waking up with a heart of gratitude and less of a murmuring spirit. Always leading with a heart of gratitude has really helped me to approach life with a totally different mindset and just knowing that I'm in a good place, actually great place because everything that I have, the good and the not so good, I have to give God thanks because it's him that's allowed it to happen. Next, cutting off people that no longer served me or didn't align with my purpose or didn't align with just where I was headed in life. So knowing the woman that I want to become, what does her friends look like? What does her network look like? What type of people does she have in her circle? Where does she go? What does she, what does she do? Where I'm at in life, I need to make sure that all my relationships are intentional. I need to ensure that the people in my life serves a purpose. I need to ensure that the people in my life are supportive, genuine, they're honest and they're loyal and they're trustworthy and they love me. I think it's important to take account of the people in your life and make sure that you have a network of people who are able to pour into you, hold you accountable and as for as a woman of God, I need friends that can pray for me because there are some moments and sometimes I have really down days and I need to call on a lifeline, i.e. a friend. You need to make sure that your friendships are intentional and you need to make sure that these people that are around you, that you allow into your space, they mean you well. Not everyone has access to me. I've learned to compartmentalize people. I mean, not everyone that you're related to by blood is your family. And just because they're not your blood doesn't mean that they can't be family. There are some friendships, there are some relationships that I have just dissolved and some that have dissolved naturally from me praying and asking God to reveal to me who is for me and who isn't. And God has done the work. There are some people that I don't even remember that we were friends at some point, like out of sight, out of mind. So changing my friendship circle, changing the people allowing my space, changing the people that, ha that has access to me has really just shifted me to a totally different level. Because what you gotta understand is not everyone is qualified or equipped to go where you're going. Gotta be intentional about these things. Don't just have people around just for the sake of having them around. No, no, not in 2023, no, no. The next thing I did was I started reading more and watching videos about personal development and reading books to expound on my vocabulary that can help me intellectually. Reading different literature. I read books about finances, Christian books about developing myself and helping me with my on my walk with God. I started just being more mindful of 
the information that I was consuming. So whether that's TV shows that I was watching or scrolling on social media or literature that I would read, I would make sure that it's educational and that can help me to improve myself. Alongside that, I stop scrolling aimlessly on social media and start to consume content that also does the same. I got to the point where I just really craved the desire of just being a better human being, being a better person, being a better Christian, financially, spiritually, mentally, physically. The next thing was focusing on my physical health and that includes what I ate and also working out and sleeping. So I adopted a sleep schedule. You can change the focus on your phone. If you have an iPhone, you can put your bedtime when you wake up, when you work, you can put anything on here. So that's what I did. So I know that I work up at, wake up at a certain time and I know that I need to work out when I wake up and I know that I need to do my devotion. So all of that needs to be done before I start work. So. I have to kind of say, okay, if I need to get seven and a half, eight hours of sleep, I need to go to bed by this time so that I can wake up at this time so that I can work out, do my devotion and go to work and not fl be flustered and be rushing. I adopted a healthy and practical sleep schedule where I feel rested and it allows me to wake up naturally in the mornings, not feeling tired and gives me enough time to do what it is that I need to do. So exercising and exercising at least three times a week, eating, trying to eat healthier. That's an ongoing thing for me, but I have shifted my mind to be intentional about it. And I'm praying and asking God for discipline because when you're disciplined, you are able to commit to doing the things that you're supposed to do. The last but not least is just reducing stress. And that also includes stressful people. Not making anything stress me out. I literally pray about everything and leave everything to God. God said to cast your cares upon him. So that's what I'm gonna do. I cast it all upon him because at the end of the day, if I can't, if I have no control over it, why am I stressing about it, right? So those are just a few of the self-improvement steps that I have taken to level up or glow up, whichever way you wanna put it. And I implore you to do the same. Look at your life and say, am I happy with where I am? Do I want better for myself? And how can I do that? It's going to take commitment. It's going to take hard work. It's going to take patience. It's gonna take a lot of grace. You gotta give yourself grace. You gotta give yourself room to fail some days, but learn from your mistakes and grow from them. But be patient with yourself. Allow yourself to go through this journey and just ensure that you are intentional about everything that you do. Life is short and while you're here, do the best and make the best of the time that has been allotted to you. And that's all I have for you guys today. Until next time, stay safe, take care, and God bless. Bye.